Reggie Edwards, the front row report. I am here with the one and only Michael Sweet today. Mike, Michael, thank you for calling in. Thank you for taking time to talk to me yet again. It's always fun, and I'm glad to have you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me again, man. I appreciate it and uh, all the support always. And uh, wouldn't be here, couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely definitely an honor for me. I was uh, actually just before you called, had just finished listening to a preview of I'm Not Your suicide the upcoming solo record out may 6th and i gotta tell you oh yeah yeah i gotta tell you it's outstanding it's uh definitely some of your best work you've done it is just amazing well thank you my gosh i, I you know what's what's a little interesting about the album and kind of cool is it's different I mean, it's, it is. you know i think i have the striper uh, stuff that i do and and Striper has its own sound, and then when I do a solo album, obviously I want to make it its own, and and it's an opportunity for me to experiment a little more and try different things and stretch out a little bit more. And that's what I did on this album. I, you know, you you got songs like Take It on the World Tonight, which are a little more down the Striper road, mm -hmm. and then you've got songs like Coming Home and um, This Time, which are nothing like Striper. So it was really fun trying different things. It really was. Yeah, you used a lot of different music. Musical elements than you than you use with Striper, but then again with Striper, there's a there's there's a sound that's almost expected sometimes a very heavy, very yes. uh, very metal sound. And uh, with I'm Not Your Suicide, you use there's some country some country elements. There's a uh, there's the deep purple organ sound that you yep. use. Um, it's uh, it's a very eclectic sound on this record, and I think fans are really going to be surprised in a good way when they hear it. It is, you know, it is very. It, it's certainly uh, I always use this word a lot, but it's true. It's very diverse. You know, there's a lot of different things going on, and you know, when people hear country, striper fans hear country, that it might make them raise an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, what's really funny. Is I grew up in a in a country music home. Uh, you know, my parents are country uh, singers and songwriters. My dad actually co-wrote a number one country song in 1979 really? with Fred Fred Imus. Yeah, but it was entitled "I Don't Want to Have to I Don't Want to Have to Marry You." Right. And um, yeah, so basically, I grew up around country. I was playing on my dad's country sessions when I was a kid. Interesting. So you know, it, I feel like there's more legitimacy to that and, and, and it is real I, i'm not just some guy like hey i'm gonna try country now i mean i i, I tried country when i was 12 years old you know <laughs> so it worked and what I think is really interesting especially the the track heart of gold features both the rock sound and that country sound together especially on the bonus track with Electra um, it starts out heavy and then it goes with her part kind of goes into the the country esque kind of sound and then goes back into the rock sound it's that song it does. very very diverse itself and what kind of led you to work with Electra that's a very interesting selection well, I'll tell you, the song itself is one of my all-time favorites. Lyrically, I've always loved that song, and I always said I would love to cover that song. This is my opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, in covering it, I wanted to retain some of the flavors the original had with the steel guitar and those hook lines, because they're just so undeniable. But I wanted to also give it a little more edge, which is what I did. And then, you know, I've become really good friends with Dave Mustaine and uh, and his wife Pam and their family and I, I saw Electra sing on a uh, on YouTube. She was performing on a, a television show out on the West Coast. I believe it was Seattle or Oregon or somewhere in that area. And I was really blown away. I'm like, wow, she's really good. And I was looking for a female voice to join me on that song. And I just thought, you know what, she'd be perfect. And I suggested the idea, and they loved it, and she was uh, gracious enough to do it. And I'm thrilled to have her be a part of it. I mean, she's also in the video as well. Oh, cool! It's uh, it's a very it's a very good song, and uh, I think the two of you kind of complement each other vocally and everything very well on the track. It's uh, very well done. Um, well, you know. Yeah, I, I have a very 
a unique voice, uh, love it or hate it. And, you know, uh, Electra has a very unique voice. She's got a, 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 a very recognizable voice. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she, she's got her own sound, which is really cool. And that's what led me uh, to, to ask her to do it and made me even more excited about her being a part of it because she's got such a cool voice. Awesome. This going back to Dave, uh, he actually wrote the uh, the foreword for your, uh, for Honestly, the upcoming autobiography that you wrote, um, which is coming out yeah, at the same time as the, as the record does. Well, yeah, it's, it's coming, the record's coming out May 6th, mm-hmm. and uh, the album, excuse me, the album's coming out May 6th, and the book it may came, come out May 6th, or may come out a little bit later. It's done. I mean, it's right now, the only thing that we're trying to do is lock in uh, the right company to publish it. And it, we, we pretty much have that locked in, but it may delay the book release a little bit. We're, it's unclear. But anyway, long story short, yes, he did. He wrote, it wasn't the foreword. He actually just gave me a nice long quote okay. uh, along with a number of other people, uh, such as Chris Jericho, Eddie Trunk, Jordy White, who plays the Marilyn Manson, and then uh, Dan, Larry the Cable Guy, uh, they all uh, wrote me some nice quotes and really cool of them to be a part of it, you know? Awesome. Yeah, I read, uh, you have a preview of Chapter 1 up on your website, and I had a chance to, obviously, I'm going to read the preview for Chapter 1 if it's out there, and uh, you start the book very very personally and interestingly and it's a a great (laughs) way to get people into the book it's a very i did not expect you to start the book that way it's uh (laughs) was it hard for you to talk about that stuff well here's the deal you know i i have over my lifetime learned that it's better to be open and honest than to, you know, to make people believe you're something that you're not. Mm-hmm. And this book, not that I've done that or we've done that, but, you know, I think sometimes people, uh, you know, view Striper or, or the, the individuals in the band as something other than what they really are. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they put us on this pedestal and you think we're perfect and we're this and we're that and we haven't, we can do no wrong. And the fact is we do wrong every day. And I talk about that in the book. Mm-hmm. Does that change my faith in my relationship with God? Absolutely not. It just, uh, in my opinion, solidifies even more so why I need God in my life, why we all need God in our lives. Because we're sinners. And, um, you know, I get into that in the book, and I just, I wanted to share with people a different side of Michael Sweet, and it's all open and honest, hence the title, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think some things are going to be read in the book that are probably going to shock people. You know, they're going to, they're going to read them and be like, wow, (laughs) you know, okay, I had no idea. Uh, and, you know, from, when I was younger, being arrested, to, you know, how I felt when Kyle was sick, to leaving the band, and just uh, all sorts of things in there uh, that people just don't know. Was there anything that you thought about, or even for a second, about maybe not talking about, or, you know, maybe this is too personal, um, but in the end decided to put in there? Not really. I mean, um... You know, there are there are some things. I mean, I, I, I there wasn't enough time and enough pages in the book to, to get everything out and into the book. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Maybe there will be a second book or, or even a third book. Well, depending upon, you know, how it does and if time and money allows. But, uh, I mean, I get into pretty much everything. I really do. I, I talk about, I talk about, for example, why I left the band. If people have been asking that for years, and I've given a brief description as to why, but I've never gotten in depth. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Tim. Tim didn't stand a few albums. People have asked. That's been like a big question on everybody's minds. Well, I answer it. You know, and I, and I, there's a whole chapter devoted to that. Oh, wow. There's a whole chapter devoted to my love hate relationship with Yellow and Black. Hmm. You know. Uh, and why why I feel it's hurt the band. Hmm. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff in my perspective of things 
that I think is going to surprise people. Now, am I going to am I going to make fans out of everyone? I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I may make a few enemies. I, I have no idea. And it's not it's not a book that's about throwing people under the bus like a lot of autobiographies. They just literally. It seems like it's all about hurting other people. That's not what this book is. Right. And, and I would, this book is me just sharing my life and, and, and telling stories. And unfortunately, in those stories, some other people were involved, mm -hmm. you know. And I would assume that, you know, there's not going to be, for the people that are addressed in the book, there's not going to be any surprises when they read it. I'm sure that they there's, there's a heads up to them, hey, you know, it, this is going to be touched on. Don't, you know. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, I get into, you know, our bankruptcy uh -huh. and, uh, you know, what happened uh, that caused that and, and why I was just completely, you know, opposed to what happened and how it was, how our finances were being run and my mom was managing at the time and my brother was leading the band. And, you know, I just, I, I get into a lot of stuff. That's, that's valid and true and it, it, that's what happened. And it led to me wanting to leave the band. You know, a lot of stuff that went on. And, um, and that's all in the book. And it's just an interesting uh, point of view. And I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised to hear, you know, something they may have thought was the case. They're going to read the book and say, oh, gosh, that wasn't at all what I thought it was. You know? Awesome. So it's definitely a book that fans of the band for a long time are definitely going to want to pick up. I can't wait to hear it, to read it and check it out. It's going to be, it's going to be a great book. Um, obviously from it really is and you know I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this um we sent it out to a number of publishers who weren't interested hmm. and even before they ever read the book wow. and there and, and that seems to be something that striper's kind of used to you know we'll send out music to a label and they'll be like oh we're not interested interested or a show we're not interested before they hear us to see us and they're like yeah you know but these publishers read the book and called back management and said well, we are a hundred percent interested this is awesome so everyone's getting really excited it's a really great book awesome uh now i gotta ask you <clears throat> next month uh striper is playing a show that i will be at uh you're playing at the surf ballroom in clear lake iowa the famous buddy yep. holly big bopper venue my uh my dad and i will be there and uh nice what, uh, yeah, it'll be the first time he's ever seen you guys, and he's been a fan since the Yellow and Black Attack back in the 80s. Uh, oh, he's the wow. Reason, he's the reason I'm into Striper, and so that'll be good for him to see you guys. But what, obviously, you know, the history of that venue, and how, have you guys played, played there before, and what does playing that venue mean to you guys as artists and musicians? Well, I mean, obviously, I don't believe we've ever played there before, but obviously playing a venue on that level and that has that history is always just such a great feeling. You know, to walk in and see those flyers or those posters or pictures of the people that have played there before us and built that venue, it's always an honor. You know, and an, an amazing feeling and to know that we're able to go in and, and perform in the same place is like, wow, you know, gosh, this is incredible. Uh, but, you know, it's always humbling. I mean, we, we, we count our blessings and we, we say to ourselves, wow, we're, we're able to do this. A lot of people aren't, you know, we're in our 50s, we're still going and we're playing this venue and how, how cool is this, you know? So it's, it's a true blessing. It really is. Awesome. Um, finally, uh, you put on Facebook a couple months ago something I thought found very interesting that you would be interested in doing a tour, Striper and Skillet, which I think would be an outstanding tour. Um, yeah, I, I I would be interested. The problem is is making it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, I don't know how to say this without just saying it. And it's probably going to come across like I'm a jerk, but. Um, I think what happens a lot of time is people get involved, like management mm -hmm. and labels, and when there's someone in the band that's open to it, or the entire band or bands that are open to it, you've got someone else saying, oh, I wouldn't do that. And they don't really know what's going on in the real world. Uh, the facts are a skill in Striper Tour would be amazing. Mm. And I guarantee, I guarantee you, it would be an incredibly successful tour. It would, it would create a buzz. People would come out. It would be awesome. Uh, 
And it would be different because how many times can you go see three or four modern bands or three or four old school bands in a show? It's like been there, done that a million times. Mm Mm-hmm. But if you merge the two, it makes it more interesting and more unique. And I think it'd be really powerful. Yeah. But, you know, I mentioned it online. I got a little response. And then I reached out to their management. They said they're booked up for a year. It's like the yeah. same old stuff. Like, yeah. whatever. You know, it, it, it gets a little frustrating sometimes because if they really wanted to make it happen, they could make it happen. Yeah. And, and so could we. Yeah, and I was I was just thinking because I did an interview a couple months ago with John from Petra, and he said the same thing that he would love to tour with them. And I was thinking, yeah, yeah, Petra, Striper, Skillet, and maybe Red or Thousand Foot Crutch, the past and the present on stage together. I agree. Would be, I think that would make every fan's dream come true, and I think that it would be. I think the bands and artists on the tour would have a great time as well. It would be awesome. I think. Um, it would be, it would be, Ben, you know, it just for whatever reason remains talk, but I mean, I think it would be incredible, and it's all about picking the right bands. Exactly. You know, uh, you know, and whoever those are, whatever they are, I, I don't know, but uh, I think it would be great, it would be very successful, and people would love it. Absolutely. But Michael, I know you got to run, I know you're working on a, I know you're doing a lot of stuff, working on some music, and records, and everything, thank you so much for taking time again today, and uh, We'll see you in about two and a half, three weeks in Iowa. So Okay, brother. Thank thank you so much and, and for being understanding and I look forward to to seeing you soon and Absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, man, okay? Awesome man. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Okay, buddy. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.